Uh, we're going to have uh, basically a, a very informal panel discussion uh, this afternoon. So if any of you have any questions as we move along, raise your hand. Uh, Matt will be around with the microphone. Uh, we've got some questions that we'll be uh, addressing up here, but uh, we welcome any additional questions from the audience. Um, you know, we, for the last half an hour, we've heard some pretty, uh, or we've seen some pretty interesting statistics, stats. Uh, 90% and, and a stable 90% uh, occupancy, uh, 17 million square feet. Um, absorption of about uh, 1 million uh, square feet in the last 10 years, pretty respectable. As uh, Rob pointed out, uh, that's kind of a medium cookie. I think we've had some cookies that are medium that were pretty darn satisfying. Uh, in, in your mind, uh, in your perception, how do you believe St. Paul is viewed as a place to do business in comparison to other cities in the Midwest? Uh, Dave. Uh, good afternoon. Um, and here again, my perspective is a bit more from the public side. We only represent uh, public entities. We do a lot of economic development and capital finance. I guess I'd uh, start with maybe two uh, global remarks. First, uh, uh, cities are, and counties are under tension, including St. Paul, between the need to fund basic operations and the fact that they know that vital to the community is the uh, private sector and the local economy trying to balance those. The other one globally I think I would mention is that uh, local governments in general, uh, they're late into recession and they stay down after the recession starts to uh, revive, come, uh, come out of the recession. So a lot of people are saying 2010 will be worse for our cities and counties than 09, and 09 was sort of a generational sort of uh, impact. Um, so for St. Paul, I think there's three or four things in that context. Uh, one, I think everybody here is interested in taxes, so I lead off with that. Um, you have this significant need that, uh, to fund local services, and you've seen a uh, really implosion, people have uh, significant layoffs in, the, in a number of cities and counties. I think uh, if you look across Minnesota at least, uh, most of the, a lot of the shock was caused by folks that receive a lot of money from the state and all of a sudden you know, aren't. And um, the folks that get a lot of money from the state in this market is predominantly central cities and first-tier suburbs. The more affluent suburbs, if you go out, you see proportionally less money from the state. So um, I think you're going to see uh, that sort of pressure on tax, cutting services, raising taxes to be more prominent. Uh, St. Paul has been out front on the service cutbacks. I'm going to see some of that. Just two more things. Uh, one, uh, the whole quality of life issue, and I think if you look, uh, the region has always been uh, uh, exemplary for higher education, educated workforce, etc. I think within that, St. Paul has always been viewed uh, as really a cut above because of uh, the quality of the neighborhoods, uh, the families that are attracted to live here. So I think the educated workforce and uh, the fact that the neighborhoods are in large part anchored by higher education institutions would be very well. And lastly, public incentives. Uh, I think the St. Paul Port Authority and its work on brownfields and other things is uh, unique in the state in terms of their record. And I think as you saw in the Craig situation, really to extend additional financing as an inducement, you know, they haven't been shy of that. What is your perception on uh, doing business in St. Paul comparison to other Midwest cities? Uh, you know, from my perspective, so we, we think we're going to be coming from the Mendota Heights area, which is basically you know, uh, more of a suburb kind of community. And uh, when we were first coming to St. You know, looking at St. Paul, quite honestly, the, the perception of St. Paul was that it wasn't very much growth; it was kind of stagnant, and so on. And it was a matter of uh, when, we, when we put out our request for bid that we were actually invited to St. Paul. And when we were invited to St. Paul, actually uh, shortly thereafter, we were introduced to two key players in my mind. One was the Galter Management. Uh, when we saw this building, said, hey, this is very unique. It's got a lot of character, had, had that sort of thing. And then the city got involved and actually started to kind of talk to us about what are all the elements and attributes of the city. And it really kind of fell into three categories for us. The first one was the attributes of the city itself. You know, it's got a great work ethic. Uh, it's got some modernization, so now the modernization is, is happening. It's got a little bit of history, a little bit of art, uh, kind of, so that, that work-life balance, it felt really good. And then the second thing was uh, business amenities. So one of the things that we were really looking for is from a business perspective are, the, you know, the hotel's reasonable. We have good, 
good transportation back and forth to the airport. We think Minneapolis to St. Paul Airport is big for us. It's where a lot of our customers come in and go. We do business worldwide, so we want to make sure that we have easy access to the airport, easy access to where our offices are. Um, in terms of uh, business amenities, for conference space, and so on, we needed, we needed all these different things. And St. Paul had all of that. Then we looked at one of the key things from my perspective at Cray in Mendota Heights, um, in this particular location, over the next 10 years or so, I'll have about 25% of my workforce retiring. So I had a situation such that what other things do we have to offer as a uh, publicly owned company? We have to be able to offer amenities. Well, in today's workplace, it's kind of hard to offer more amenities, you know, for the salaries that you're paying and the taxes that you're paying and there's a regular big operating expense. So we had to look for other things. And when we looked at that, St. Paul has a very nice uh, work-life balance. Uh, you, you've got everything from physical fitness to art, theater, a wide variety of uh, dining that gave people a real broad perspective, you know, broad spectrum because we have multiple types of employees. They might want to eat very cheaply, they might want to bring their own lunch, or they might want to, you know, bring clients out to a very nice dinner or something. So it, it really had a very nice balance. The other thing we looked at was if we were going to hire somewhere between 30 and 40 year olds in terms of the engineering talent, where are they migrating to? Most of them are migrating to cities in, or, in order to actually reduce their carbon footprint. They want to have mass transportation. They want to be able to have a community feel and not travel very far. So we looked at that and started looking at where St. Paul was going with their vision, particularly in the lower common area, with mass transit coming, uh, light rail coming. It really sort of makes sense.